think I met Michael actually um, at, uh, at one of the, uh, the, the events here in Hong Kong. I talked about the Start Me Up Hong Kong Festival. So this year, um, because of the current uh, situation, it got postponed to July and it will be fully online. So a great opportunity to come and log back in. Um, and it's really a place where, particularly on Startup Impact Summit, we really want to make sure that we do not only showcase impact, but also make impact. So a job fair, business matchmaking, investor matchmaking, um, workshops, all of these are going to take place again, just to make sure that you get to the resources you need the fastest, the quickest possible. So if you're um, maybe um, connected with us already, you have seen us come also to the rest of the world. So part of um, what we do as of the conference is running a global startup competition. So we went to 12 different countries um, around the world and uh, did pitching competitions there. And uh, once again, given that, the festival had to be postponed. We actually executed the finale online. Now, when we go um, back to you know one of the advantages when uh, and one of the really important you know resources that you need to grow your startup is really access to talent. And uh, in Hong Kong, um, there are several um, top class universities. Actually, five of them are in the top 100. That's very very unique. Top 100 worldwide. Um, and once again, it's not only about fintech talent, which is obviously here again um, a very very great resource because you have 75 percent of, of world's banks sitting here in hong kong and with that you have a wonderful access but you also have once again that diversity in terms of international um, uh, talent here with also um, universities such as MIT or um, Chicago who setting up their um, you know Asian uh, campus actually here here in Hong Kong and uh, one of the things obviously that, that we do is really through our jobs board and, and job fairs, make sure that these connections really, really happen. And it's relatively easy when we compare in terms of immigration law, it's relatively easy um, compared to other, to other parts here and other um, cities or uh, countries in, in Asia. Now funding, you know, we're going to talk about talent. Funding is obviously the other big um, important um, resource that you, that you want to make sure exists in a thriving ecosystem. And I already talked about the fact that, you know, um, examples that we have really uh, a, a thriving ecosystem, particularly at the later stage here, um, a thriving investing ecosystem is great. Now, on the other hand, we also have the highest density of high net worth individuals. And again, for us, it was really important. And that's the reason why we launched Angel Hub to make sure that these people get access to the ecosystem and, and can invest. So there is a really big community of active VCs, PEs, and, you know, Hong Kong is, um, you know, the world's number one IPO um, hub, you know, like always chasing between New York and, and Hong Kong. So thanks to Alibaba, we are you know, kind of like pushed up first in ranks again. Um, but, uh, but even we can see more and more interest also from, you know, earlier stage companies, um, uh, sorry, earlier stage investors like Angels. Um, and uh, obviously the, the access also to the Chinese investing community is something uh, where Hong Kong can, can still bridge. And you can just see a couple of, of very familiar names probably um, for you guys that, that are active here in, in the region. Just, just once again on fintech, um, you know, obviously when we talk financial services, the regulatory aspect is very important. I said at the beginning, 2019 was kind of like the year um, for fintech here in, in Hong Kong. Um, very, very strong um, reputation from the regulators. Um, and it was actually for a long, long time, a bit of um, a pain point uh, because it was difficult for um, startups to be part um, of that very, very um, strong and solid regulatory framework, but all of the major regulators, I mentioned the HKMA, the SFC, and the insurance authorities really opened up, put fintech um, contact points in place, and collaborated also with the tech and innovation scene um, to bring, to bring um, licenses and innovation to life. So here's just, um, you know, a very, very quick snapshot on 
the Hong Kong fintech map. So yeah, four of our unicorns are um, from the fintech sector. Uh, here again, very diverse. I mean, Air Wallex and TNG um, are probably relatively similar with um, you know mobile wallets um, with cross-border payment and remittance. Um, but WeLab was Hong Kong's very first peer-to-peer -peer lending platform and evolved uh, really from cutting out the middleman to a technology-based um, uh, uh, financial services provider and now also holds um, a virtual banking license. And BitMEX uh, is one of the most successful crypto and currency exchange platforms in, in the world. So um, one last point um, about, again, uh, why is it, really interesting to leverage Hong Kong as a headquarter or a launch pad here in Asia. It's because it is very, very strategically positioned, right? On a demand side, uh, I mean, we're in five hours flight radius of half of the, the world's populations. And, you know, as soon as as flights can can take off um, again, uh, you know, you really, really have access um, to branch out really quickly. But on the other hand, again, given that Hong Kong is kind of like a melting pot with 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 a lot of, with a high um, percentage of, of foreigners actually living here, you can already start testing your product on a very diverse consumer base. And obviously from a supply point of view, being that close to um, China and the Pearl River Delta, which is still you know, the manufacturing powerhouse of the world, um, that makes it really, really easy. And more and more you will hear about that concept of the Greater Bay Area. And when you ask the question, what actually is the Greater Bay Area? Um, typically, uh, particularly when I get a chance to, to talk to people who are more used to look into the West or, or the US, I said, if you can imagine, you could put Las Vegas, New York and Silicon Valley into one area. That's basically what, what the Greater Bay Area is. Um, so it's already the, the largest Bay Area in terms of population with 70 million people. So um, this would put it in Europe, you know, just between Germany and, and France in terms of size. And it is actually forecasted on a GDP perspective to very, very soon overcome the currently largest Bay Area from a GDP size, which is the Tokyo, the Tokyo Bay Area. And the thing is, um, so these 11 cities, um, I mean, I talked about, you know, the example of three cities, you know, uh, compared to, you know, New York, Silicon Valley and, and Las Vegas. So that would be Hong Kong, Shenzhen and Macau. Um, there are eight other cities that form the Greater Bay Area. And what is really interesting, it is all in a one hour reach. I mean, from Hong Kong to Shenzhen now with the high speed train it takes 15 minutes. Um, and yeah, Hong Kong obviously would be kind of like the New York example of um, what I was referring to. It's, you know, the international financial market here in Asia. And we talked in length already about it and all the advantages. Just a few words on, on Shenzhen. I mean, Shenzhen is an ecosystem that is obviously um, on steroids and exploding um, because it has, you know, um, access to the, to the China. It is part of China, so it has access to the entire you know, Chinese market. But in terms of innovation, uh, a lot of hardware accelerators are really sitting there. Um, and if you sit like some of these acceleration programs right on top of, an, of the world's largest electronic market, you can understand why some companies can go from rapid prototyping um, to mass manufacturing in three weeks. So we have companies who said they relocated from the US here um, to Hong Kong or Shenzhen uh, because yeah, it could take them three weeks only would have typically taken them three months um, in, in Silicon Valley, for example. And then Macau, just interestingly for, for stats, I mean, it's still from a startup ecosystem perspective, a relatively young and, and just nascent ecosystem. Uh, but, you know, given the fact in, in terms of, you know, being a tourism and gaming hotspot, um, turnover wise, I think it's still six or seven times bigger than Las Vegas. Um, it is something where, you know, a lot of um, innovation is going to come from and um, really interesting because it also gives this bridge to the Portuguese speaking business business um, hub. So talked about it's 11 cities um, and what is really interesting within that cluster has already given birth to um, 43 unicorns. So it's obviously not only about the unicorns, um, you know, I hate 
to see that very often there's like a lot of focus on the unicorns but i'll just take that as an example to show you how fast you can actually um, scale the company and therefore i think it's it's a really good indicator and we arguably say the best is yet to come because within this area, and that is very important to note, you know, for, for foreigners who are kind of like to look and, and, and launch into this part of the world, it's still three different currencies. It's still three different tax systems. It's still, you know, different custom zones, different professional qualifications and legal infrastructure. But as soon as this will grow closer together, obviously there's more, more um, to come. So here, just an idea in terms of, you know, how these, how these uh, unicorns kind of like allocate between the different cities. Um, and what is really interesting, I mean, some of these names you're very familiar with, you know, DJI, DJI, the largest drone manufacturer, WeBank, which is part, you know, of, of the Tencent um, ecosystem, we talked about Sensetad, is that a lot of um, also active, um, you know, Chinese uh, unicorn captors, let's say investors are really, really very active in, in this region. So as I said, and like a little bit in concluding, um, I think what, what um, is in the blueprint for the Greater Bay Area, um, also on a government level, is obviously trying to understand of getting better, better connectivity. And if we're looking to, you know, further, you know, um, facilitation in movement of goods, people, money and data, uh, we can actually see the huge opportunity we're all really thrilled about. Um, with that, if you want to have, you know, any more information about, you know, the names of the acceleration programs, the community builders, the events, again, the active VCs and angel groupings, et cetera, et cetera, obviously the startups, like who are the startups that are operating in that space, grab your copy. Um, it's for free download. You can just go on whub.io. Um, you can find all our white papers there. And we used to call them toolboxes because they really meant to give you all the tools in hand to connect um, already from overseas and obviously also from Hong Kong directly. And you can always reach out to us. Um, we're very happy to make you know, any of these introductions and connections. That's part of our passion. And I'm just gonna stop here and see if, if anybody has some, uh, some questions. <clears throat> Let me see. Just unmute yourself, guys, if you want to ask a question. Uh, Karina, <coughs> hi, sorry. Um, I unfortunately missed a part of your presentation because the other one uh, ran over time. Is it possible to receive the slides somehow and, and could we connect perhaps separately via, uh, I don't know, LinkedIn or what have you? Super, absolutely, with pleasure. You know what? I'll just kind of actually um, quickly. Uh, make sure who was speaking right now that was sergi or christian that's sorry uh that's a jink yeah that's aj okay okay fantastic very good yeah i actually had to uh you know quickly uh, move over here good any other any other questions i think oh and i'm looking so see um i'm also running over now i guess we probably soon have to make um place for the others <clears throat> i'll just uh, load up this one more time as well so you can uh, you can take yeah, a Okay, or if you want to connect with the investment platform, if you're looking for investment, you know, you can also take a shot. And that's it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, great. But I'm happy to actually, uh, you know, share. Uh, No, no. Hostia, pues a tu et va de conya. I és i és super mega mas. Què veuràs? Mira que va. If actually nobody has any other questions anymore, I think I'll just uh, leave the room that to uh, let me quickly check the chat. Okay. Great. Please just reach out. You know what? I'm going to leave you my email address as well. You should find me on LinkedIn easily. 
Okay, and I think with that, 